Hey guys, it's Megan, and in today's video, I'll be showing you even more arts and crafts projects to try when you're bored. We have a lot to get through today, so let's just get into it. The first idea that I have for you guys is to make a phone charm. I've seen these all over TikTok, and I've been dying to make one. For this project, you'll need some beads, string, and a lighter. I went through some jewelry that I had left over from when I was little to find beads. Cut a piece of string that's 15 to 17 inches long. Make sure that it's not stretchy string. I used stretchy string in these clips, but I had to redo it because, well, as you can see, it was a hot mess and I didn't really think that it would hold my phone. I ended up using some of the waxed cotton cord left over from when I made those Pura Vita style bracelets. Knot one end of your cord and burn the other end. This will stop the string from fraying as you slide the beads on. If you don't want to use a lighter, you can also use clear nail polish. Literally, just string your beads on in any pattern that you want. I combined some of the beads from the old jewelry with some mini pony beads. I made the bead section about 10 inches long. Tie the ends of your string together. Burn the end of the knot and slide it underneath the bead or two. Then tie a knot like this to create the strap for your phone charm. To put it on your phone, slide the strap through one of the holes in your phone case. Bring the beads up through the strap to loop it around. You can take your phone case off to do this if you want, but I was just too lazy. If you have an iPhone, you can put the phone charm up here by the silent mode button, or down by the speakers. I feel like it would make more sense to put it at the bottom, but most people put it more towards the top, so I don't know, do what you want. I think these are super cute though, and I definitely want to get some different beads to make more of them. The second idea that I have for you guys is to draw these distorted smiley faces. This is the perfect mindless doodle. First, I took a sharpie and drew a bunch of like blobs all over the page. It almost looks like I'm getting ready to draw cow print. Don't think about it, just draw a bunch of random shapes. Once you have all the blobs, start adding smiley faces to them. This is actually way easier than it looks. Just pick where you want the eyes and draw two ovals. For the mouth, draw a line that curves along the bottom edge of the blob shape. And that's it. Just repeat this with each blob until they all have faces. I made some of the faces upside down, some of them were sideways, just have fun with it. You could stop here, or you can color it. I filled in the background with a pink Ohuhu brush marker. I made all of the smiley faces yellow. You can use any colors that you want. Try making the faces a whole bunch of different colors. Okay, so I just thought of this, but if you want to do this like to hang in your room, you could use glow-in-the-dark paint or that like um, UV light paint, and that would look really cool too. I thought it looked a little bit too plain, so I used a white gel pen to add lines around the faces. And that was it. This drawing is so easy. Literally anyone can do it, I promise. This next project was inspired by these poppet fidget toys that I saw recently. To make the popping mechanism, I cut a circle from a piece of craft foam. If you don't have craft foam, cut a circle from a piece of paper and cover both sides with tape. Cut a slit in the craft foam and fold it like this to create a sort of wide cone shape. Use some hot glue to stick the foam back together. Flip it over to the back and cut off the excess foam on the other side. Now you should have a piece that can pop in and out like this. Measure how big the foam circle is. Cut out two shapes from cardboard with a circle in the middle. Make the circle a little smaller than your foam piece. You can make the cardboard in any shape that you want. I did a flower for this one. I actually cut these with my Cricut to save time, but they can be cut by hand with scissors or an X-Acto knife. Decorate the cardboard pieces however you want. I used scrapbook paper on mine and covered it with some UV resin to be fancy. Totally unnecessary, but I think it makes it look nice. You could paint it, use more craft foam, whatever you want. To assemble the poppet, flip one of the cardboard pieces to the back. Put a ring of hot glue around the middle, then put in the foam piece. I wanted to make mine into a keychain, so I glued on a small piece of ribbon and folded it over to make a loop. This step is optional though. Pop the foam piece out so that the bump is facing up. Add another ring of hot glue around it, then put on the second piece of cardboard. Add some more hot glue around the edges so it sticks together really well. I didn't love that the edges of the cardboard were showing, so I glued some more ribbon around the edges. And that's it! If you're making yours into a keychain, you can just slip it through the loop. These are so cute. I love keychains in general, and keychains that actually do something are like my favorite thing. 
I figured out later that if you don't want this line on the popping part, you can take a sheet of craft foam, heat it up with a straightening iron, and mold it over something round. I used an EOS lip balm. Hold it there for a minute until the foam cools, and cut out the little bump part, then follow all the other steps the same way. I made the flower and an avocado. Let me know if you can think of some different shapes that I should do. Another one of my favorite things to do when I'm bored is to make paper crafts. This time I made a butterfly bookmark. Cut a piece of paper that's 3 by 4 inches. Fold it in half hamburger style, then fold it in half again like this. Unfold the paper so you have a crease in the middle. Fold the two bottom edges up to this line to create a triangle shape. Unfold one of the triangles, then refold it so that it's inside like this. Repeat this with the other triangle. Fold the top of your paper together like this. Fold the bottom the same way, and turn it so that you have this little gap in the middle. Fold this part at the top down to create the shape of a butterfly wing. Do the same thing on the other side, and that's it! You can leave the bookmark like this, or you could decorate it. I used a black marker to outline and add designs to the wings. These origami butterflies are super quick and easy to make, especially once you get the hang of it. They can be used as bookmarks, or you could use them to decorate other projects. This next idea is another one that I found on TikTok, which is to make these pony bead rings. For this project, you'll need pony beads, a hair straightener, some parchment paper, tape, and something to wrap the rings around. First, take some parchment paper and tape it around the part of the straightener that gets hot. This will make sure that the beads don't stick to it. Turn your straightener on and pick out your beads. The number of beads that you need will depend on your ring size and the size of your beads. My ring size is about a 7, so I needed 7 normal sized pony beads. Put the beads on your straightener in a line, then close the straightener to melt them. I opened it every once in a while to see if the ring was melted how I wanted it. When it was, I carefully removed the beads from the straightener and quickly wrapped it around my ring mandrel. If you don't have a ring mandrel, try finding a marker or something that's about the size of your finger. You might have to hold the ends together for a few seconds until it cools. When it does, you'll have a trendy little ring. These take less than 5 minutes to make, so you can make a whole bunch of them if you want to. I could totally see this being something that you'd do at a sleepover or something. This next idea is something you can do on your phone or your iPad. I love the look of these continuous line drawings that have been popular lately, and they're super easy to make. I use the Autodesk Sketchbook app because it's free, but you can use any drawing app that you want. First, create a new canvas that's 2550 by 3300 pixels. That's how big an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper is. Scroll over to the Add Image button and choose an image from your camera roll. I chose this picture of my kittens, Millie and Marty. Stretch out the image so that it fits on your canvas, then click Done. Click the plus button to add a new layer. Set the color to something that'll show up well on your image. I use this sort of like pinkish salmon color. I use the tattoo inker brush with these settings. Click the wavy line on the top bar to turn the streamline feature on. I set mine to three, then start tracing over your image. The only thing that you have to remember is to make it look like one continuous line. When you've outlined everything, click this little eye to hide your reference image, and here's what it should look like. I wanted this line to be black, so I selected the layer, clicked HSL adjustment, and dragged this bar all the way down to make it black. Then I went in with the eraser tool and smoothed out any places of the line that needed it. Now you could stop here, or you could add a little color. I went back to my original image and used the eyedropper tool to pick out some background colors. I made the colors a little lighter than in the original picture, so that they'd contrast more with the black line. I added a new layer underneath the line art and drew these blobs of color. I made a new layer for each one and added some random lines and circles too. Once you're happy with it, go up to this button in the upper left and you can save it, airdrop it, print it, whatever you want. Digital art like this is a great thing to do when you're bored because you probably already have what you need. You can do this on any phone or tablet. Although I will say if your eyesight is anything like mine, it is a whole lot easier on a tablet. Let me know in the comments. Do you prefer digital or traditional art? Personally, I've always been more of a traditional art type of person, but digital art's kind of starting to grow on me. Another thing you can do when you're bored is to make one of these textured paintings. Surprisingly, you don't need anything special for this. Just some paint and a few common household items. 
Start by painting a canvas in the color of your choice. I painted mine this light purple color. If you don't have a canvas, you can use some cardboard, a shoebox lid, or anything else that you have on hand. If you live in the US, they sell canvases at most Dollar Trees now. I always pick up a few when I go there. While that dries, we can start making the texture paste. Mix together eight tablespoons of baking soda, three tablespoons of acrylic paint, and two tablespoons of Elmer's glue. Check the consistency. You'll want it to be about the texture of like a thick frosting. If it's too thin, you can add some more baking soda. Transfer the mixture into a Ziploc bag. Push all of it to one corner of the bag and cut off the tip when you're ready to use it. I marked out where I wanted each flower to go on my canvas, then piped out eight lines radiating from each circle. This stuff actually dries way faster than I thought it would. It would actually be better to pipe out one flower at a time. Take a knife and spread out the texture paste. We want it to look sort of like flower petals. I used a palette knife, which again, you can get these at Dollar Tree, or you can just use a regular plastic knife. See, this is what I mean. Once I got halfway through the flowers, the texture paste had kind of dried too much to spread out. So I had to scrape it off and start over. This is actually a super like relaxing process and literally anyone can do it. Once all my petals were done, I made some more texture paste for the middle of the flowers. This time I cut the recipe in half. So I did four tablespoons of baking soda, one and a half tablespoons of paint, and one tablespoon of glue. You can make this in any color that you want, just by adding a different color of paint. Again, I poured the mixture into a Ziploc bag, cut off the end, and added a dot of yellow to the center of each flower. I spread the dots out with my palette knife, then let everything dry overnight. And that was it. I love how this turned out. It's definitely a little more fun and different than just painting normally. Once it's dry, the texture paste is stuck on there pretty good. You shouldn't have to worry about it chipping off. If you have any texture paste left over, you can store it for a while in an airtight container. You don't really have to worry about it going bad or anything. The only way that it could go bad is if it dries out. So that was everything for this video. Let me know if you try any of these ideas and let me know which one was your favorite. I think my favorite was the pop it keychain. Give this video a thumbs up if you'd like to see more things to do in your board videos. If you're looking for more things to do in your board, I have seven more videos linked right here. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos just like this one. My merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. I love you guys so, so much, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!